Well, the great density debate continues. Mount Pleasant residents, some, are gearing up for a showdown with the developer of a, a controversial proposal to build a 22-story residential tower in the neighborhood. Chris Vollen says his company has made significant revisions in the past year after Vancouver City Council approved its rezoning application for the corner of Broadway and Kingsway. Mr. Vollen is the vice president of Rise Alliance, and he joins me in studio today. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. Did you anticipate the kind of pushback that uh, that you're getting from some residents? Uh, from a certain group, yes, we did. We think that will be continuous. There's a, a longstanding disagreement with the community plan itself, uh, so that, that argument will go on no matter what, what anybody proposes under the plan. So what what changes have you made to try to accommodate the neighborhood? Well, first and foremost, as you say, we were approved for height and density last April, April 2012. Council gave us direction based on community input to make some mostly character changes and massing changes. Uh, and those involved, uh, our response has been to divide the building into five different blocks, five different characters, reflective of what we think is part of the character of Mount Pleasant. How, how do you mean by that, dividing oh, it into five? Uh, when we went through rezoning, it was shown as one massing model, and we have essentially five different buildings. We have a tower on, on 10th and Kingsway. Uh, and then block, building blocks on Kingsway, Broadway, Watson, and 10th Avenue. So we've given each of those a unique design character, uh, which we think reflects using materials we found in Mount Pleasant. Is it 22 stories? No, God, no. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, a, a seven-story block on Broadway, which is one of the buildings we've dropped by 30 feet, uh, six stories on Kingsway, uh, four, five on Watson, and two-story townhomes on 10th Avenue. And these are to be condos? They are, all sitting above one level of commercial. And what uh, what sort of price point are you talking about? We're, we haven't fixed that yet. We don't know what our costs are. Uh, we won't know until we get through our development permit, but we anticipate a lot of them will start in the low 300s. And go to? Uh, probably in the probably most will be significantly less than a million, uh, and the average, I think, will probably be in the four and $500,000 range. So compared to a single-family home in Mount Pleasant, which is upwards of a million, these are, these are attainable homes. So you... you... I don't know how to define affordable anymore. Anyway. Nobody, nobody does. I guess it's what people can and will pay. Yeah. Well, attainable is a good word. Um, the, the market prices, we, we are subject to current pricing, current construction pricing, current fees from the city. So we price as low as we can to sell as easily as we can. And again, starting in the low 300s for one- and two-bedroom homes, we have a good number of two-bedroom homes and townhomes. How many square are, feet would they be? Uh, they range from studios are range from 430 up to uh, two bedrooms to 1,050 square feet and townhomes to 1,400 square feet. So we have a fair number of two bedrooms and townhomes. You must sense there's a, a demand, a consumer demand. We're getting a lot of demand. People want to live in this neighborhood. And as Gordon Price said yesterday, there's strong demand for people moving to Vancouver. They want to live on transit. They want to live in walkable neighborhoods. We're getting an incredible amount of demand from people who are end users who want to live in this neighborhood. So the people who don't want it uh they're obviously they live there already they've already got theirs <laughs> they've got theirs they've got their yes that's a bit cynical but the part of the attitude is i've got mine they'll go somewhere else so we're building homes for vancouverites we're a home builder uh, there's demand in this neighborhood there's demand on transit so the community plan says this is where we should put homes sustainability uh all the the tenets of sustainability say say this is where we should should put density so that's what we're doing now, you, you told me you, you got approval for this. We did, for the so, rezoning. So we're in the second stage. So rezoning fixed height, density, and use. So the tower is 215 feet. It stays at 215 feet. We have 5.55 FSR. That stayed exactly the same. Council gave us some directions to change some of the massing to improve shadow performance, for example, to improve the pedestrian experience on Watson Street particularly. And we've done that. We've dropped four out of the five buildings. We pushed the loading bay, which was on Watson Street, fully underground. At a, at a, we actually just estimated the cost of about $3.1 million just to do that. But that's, that improves Watson Street, and that's what the community and council told us. And then the character development is the other part of it. Fascinating stuff. Uh, what has to happen now? So we, go, we had uh, actually a fantastic open house Wednesday night. We had great input from the community. We're asking... So there are is, people who are in favor of this? A huge number. A huge number spoke at the public hearing in favor of this. Uh, 600 people signed a petition in favor of this. Several hundred letters to the city in favor of this development. We find most people we talk to in the neighborhood understand that density has to go somewhere. And if they've read through the community plan, they understand that it's, it has selected only a few areas in Mount Pleasant for high density and high rise. And we're one of them. 
So, yeah, it was successful. The next steps are uh, Urban Design Panel and DP Board. Uh, this is on Twitter. Apparently somebody said on NW this morning, I'm not opposed to density. I just think it should be spread around. Yeah, put it somewhere, <laughs> put it somewhere else, uh, which is a common refrain. So, and, you know, density is relative, I guess. And, again, we follow, we have to follow the community plan. It states that uh, our site in Kingsgate Mall beside us are to be the highest density and highest height sites in Mount Pleasant. 98.5% of the rest of the community is preserved under the community plan as low and mid-rise. So the, the compromise after... What, what's mid-rise? Uh, mid-rise, so low-rise, sort of two to three story. Mid-rise, four to eight story, or four to 12 story, depending on how you define it. There's a f- philosophical disagreement on that. But mid-rise, call, on average, probably four to eight stories. Main second to seventh in the community plan is defined as six stories or higher, and we're seeing applications of eight to 12 stories uh, where it allows for it on the plan. So outside of those areas where the community plan says there should be a higher density, everything's lower mid-rise. Thank you for doing this. You're most welcome. We're going to be talking with uh, Louis Villegas, a, an urban design expert and director of RAMP. That's the Residents Association of Mount Pleasant. That's next.